moving right along in gases now. We've covered quite a bit of territory already and just a few more sections to talk about before we'll be uh, all set with Chapter 7 and hopefully you'll be feeling much better about gases. Up until now, we've made it an important point in those gas laws that we've discussed uh, that we do not change the number of moles. And of course, in the real world, that's one of the most important things as chemists is to be able to alter the number of moles either by adding in reactants or removing products. So uh, now we're finally ready to discuss Avogadro's law. That uh, name should be very familiar with moles, right? So it should be very logical that uh, the mole goes with Avogadro. And in particular, we're going to be relating volume and moles here in this section. So Avogadro's law states that the volume of a gas is directly related to the number of moles, which is a lowercase n for its abbreviation, of that gas. So if we uh, need to uh, consider the volume and the moles changing, we have to keep temperature and pressure constant here for Avogadro's law. And it should look a lot like Charles's law and Gay-Lussac's law. Uh, in this case, we're looking at volume and moles, and because it's a direct relationship, uh, we're going to take the form V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. So again, just like those other direct relationships that we saw for uh, the uh, Charles's law and Gay-Lussac's law, uh, Boyle's law there, pressure and volume, was a direct relationship, so, so that was the only one that had a different form. Okay, and we see here in the picture on the right, uh, there's uh, where you have one mole of this uh, arbitrary gas. Uh, it occupies one liter of volume at whatever the constant temperature and pressure conditions are. If we hold temperature and pressure constant and we add another mole of that same gas, now our volume would double. Uh, if we double the number of moles, we would double the volume because it's a direct relationship. Let's jump right into a learning check here, see how well you understand that law. Again, we didn't work an example together, but we've worked so many uh, of the other gas law examples. Uh, and as I've mentioned, uh, Gay-Lussac and uh, Charles law have the same sort of form. So let's see how you do here on your own. If 0 0.75 mole of helium gas occupies a volume of 1.5 liters, what volume will 1.2 moles of helium occupy at the same temperature and pressure? Uh, we don't need to list the temperature and pressure conditions as long as we say they're held constant then they really don't factor into this particular question so uh, go ahead solve the problem determine if a b or c is the correct answer choice and um, pause the video now while you do that work start us back up and we'll see how you did Applying those old steps that we've already worked several times on similar gas law problems. First, step one, organize the data into a table of initial and final conditions, analyze the problem. Here we know the initial conditions of volume are 1.5 liters and number of moles is 0.75 mole. We're looking for the final volume and we know that the final number of moles is 1.2. We also know that moles increased here. We went from 0.75 to 1.2 moles and we know that if moles increased increases, then volume should also increase. So we expect some value greater than 1.5, uh, which should help uh, narrow things down there on the multiple choice. Moving on to step two, we can rearrange that gas law equation to solve for our unknown quantity, which in this case was volume two or final volume. Uh, so we've got that set. And finally, substitute values into the gas law equation and calculate. So uh, volume two is what we're solving for. We know that volume one is 1.5 liters. We know that the final number of moles is 1.2. The starting number of moles is 0 0.75. The mole units cancel. We're left in liters, which is what our answer choices were in. And we find that it should be 2.4 liters. So the answer works out to be C. Hopefully you eliminated A because it was less than the 1.5 liters we started with. So between B and see if you did the math correctly you should have found 2.4 liters and C to be the correct answer choice. If you didn't quite get there you made a mistake uh, and it's still not clear to you what's uh, wrong there uh, please try additional problems and certainly reach out to me as needed. Now that we've talked about a number of different laws, right, four named laws plus that combined gas law, uh, we've seen that uh, it's very important in uh, working with gases that we uh, consider temperature, pressure, volume, number of moles, 
In particular, if we're going to make comparisons between different gases, we should consider uh, some sort of standard conditions. So we have these uh, arbitrary conditions that we've decided are the standard temperature, which is zero degrees Celsius, expressed, of course, since we're dealing with gases, as 273 Kelvin. And then standard pressure, one atmosphere, which is roughly uh, atmospheric pressure uh, at uh, sea level. So th that's how we arrived at those. Again, it's a lot easier to get ice water uh, and reach that 273 Kelvin than to have some arbitrary room temperature that varies uh, place to place and uh, would make gas law comparisons difficult. Remember, a lot of this gas law work was done well over 100 years ago. So ice water was uh, pretty convenient. Uh, and then standard pressure is pretty well observed most places. So we abbreviate the standard temperature and pressure as STP. Uh, and again, standard temperature uh, is 273K, which is also, of course, zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But dealing with gases, you should really get into the habit of only dealing in the Kelvin temperature scale. Standard pressure, one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury or 760 torr. Uh, but again, one atmosphere tends to be the uh, most common way you'll see it. Atmosphere tends to be the preferred unit in chemistry. Now, thinking about uh, molar volume, we've been thinking about moles and volume here with Avogadro's law. So the molar volume of a gas measured at STP, standard temperature and pressure that we just defined in the previous slide, is 22.4 liters for one mole of any gas. Uh, if you want to get really particular, it's 22.414 liters, but uh, 22.4 is where our text ends there for the liter volume of a mole of gas at STP. And again, it doesn't depend on the identity of the gas because if you think back to our properties of gases, these are very small, fast moving particles where their individual volume doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So the fact that oxygen uh, O2 molecule is uh, larger than the, uh, a, an atom of helium, uh, that's not going to factor into play when we're dealing with uh, very fast moving species in a very large container that doesn't depend much on the distance between particles. So Avogadro's law indicates that one mole of any gas at STP should occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. We'll look into real gases later on and we'll see that there's some deviation, but uh, by and large uh, that uh, rough volume of 22.4 liters per mole is uh, pretty well observed in the actual real world experiments. So if you want to think about that volume, uh, the um, molar volume of a gas, 22.4 liters for one mole of the gas, that's about the same volume of th as three regulation size basketballs. Uh, and uh, because we now have a relationship that holds, remember, only at STP can we say this uh, with any certainty, uh, we can use the uh, uh, value for the molar volume of uh, a gas at STP as a conversion factor. So 22.4 liters of any gas at STP equals one mole. And so we can have that expressed with the liters in the numerator and the mole in the denominator or uh, at the inverse of that. Uh, as needed to uh, cancel units and solve problems that we might encounter. So let's look at a new guide. One more step here than what we've been dealing with if we're going to use molar volume. First, we'll state the given and needed quantities. We'll analyze the problem, of course, as we uh, have since the beginning of the semester. Number two, we'll write a plan to calculate the needed quantity, what we ultimately want to solve for, that what the question asks for, or what the answer choices are given as. Third, we'll write the equalities and conversion factors, now including this idea of 22.4 liters uh, equal to one mole if we happen to be at STP in the problem. And then finally, we can actually set up the problem with the factors to cancel the units and arrive at the numerical answer. Okay, so for our practice problem that will work together, what is the volume occupied by 2.75 moles of nitrogen gas at STP? So step one, our given and our needed quantities. As we analyze this problem, we see that we're given the 2.75 moles of nitrogen gas, and we also are also told that we're at STP, which is a critical uh, piece of information if we're going to use this relationship. Remember, the molar volume of a gas, that 22.4 liters equaling one mole, is only true at STP. Uh, ultimately, what we need in this problem is the uh, volume of nitrogen gas in liters. We didn't specify that in the problem, uh, but um, since that's the uh, 
value that our molar volume is in, it's logical to assume that that would be an acceptable value for the answer. So step number two now, writing our plan, we have moles of N2, we can use the molar volume of a gas. Uh, since we are at STP, we can use that conversion factor to get us back into liters of nitrogen as a final answer. Now moving into step three, we can look at those equalities and we can uh, consider the way we might want to represent the conversion factor. Again, knowing that we're at STP allows us to say that one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters. Uh, and based on the fact that we start in moles of nitrogen, we probably want the form on the right where the 22.4 liters is in the numerator uh, over the one mole of the gas in the denominator. As we move on to step four, we see that's exactly the form that we'll use. And now we can uh, plug in the numbers and uh, cancel moles of nitrogen to be left in liters of nitrogen. And we find that we end up with 61.6 liters of nitrogen. Uh, again, uh, roughly three times the molar volume because we have almost three moles of nitrogen gas and we happen to be at STP. Can't stress that enough. Uh, this relationship of 22.4 liters equaling one mole is only true at STP. Now that we've worked that example together, why don't you take a moment and try this learning check here. Uh, this time the question is what is the volume in liters at STP of 4.00 grams of methane, CH4. So we, we made it a little trickier. Hopefully you remember how to go from a gram mass of a compound to the moles of that compound. Uh, so it makes it a little uh, more complicated, but uh, once you tackle that slight uh, increase in difficulty, I, I expect you'll have no problem converting the uh, moles of uh, methane into a volume using that molar volume of a gas relationship since we are indeed at STP. So pause the video here, uh, do the work, make your selection from those answer choices, and start us back up when you're ready to check how you did. All right, so looking at your setup, hopefully you, you recognize that you need to first uh, use our step one, state the given and needed quantities, analyze the problem. And here you're given that you're uh, having 4.00 grams of methane gas and that you're at STP, standard temperature and pressure. Uh, you need to know the volume of uh, methane gas that you would have at, that, at those conditions for that amount of methane at STP. So step two, you'll write your plan to calculate the needed quantity. So you're starting in grams of methane and you'll use molar mass to convert that into moles of methane. It's been a little while, so hopefully uh, you're not too out of practice with that. Once you're in moles of methane, the problem is pretty trivial. You'll use the molar volume, uh, obviously the uh, 22.4 liters over one mole of methane form to find the liters of methane gas that that mass would uh, relate to at STP. Okay, moving on to step three. Now you have the relationship that one mole of methane equals 16.0 grams, right? 12.0 grams for one mole of carbon plus 1.0 grams for each mole of hydrogen. And there's four of them. So that gives us a total of 12 plus, 16, uh, 12 plus four equals 16.0 grams here. Um, and uh, since we're starting in grams, we'll wanna have the form one mole of methane over 16.0 uh, grams to allow our uh, gram unit to cancel. We also need to know that one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters at STP. Uh, and because now we've converted into moles of methane, we need the form 22.4 liters of methane over one mole of uh, methane at STP to give us our final answer. When we uh, move on to step four and set up the problem with the factors that uh, are set up in such a way that we cancel the units to give our final desired unit, we should see that we get 5.60 liters and answer choice A was the correct answer. I'm guessing if you ran into trouble, it was probably doing that conversion version from uh, mass to moles. Uh, and hopefully uh, now that you've seen that and you remember that we've done that in the past, it shouldn't uh, pose too big an issue, but certainly do uh, let me know if you have trouble. Um, we'll all get a chance to practice another learning check though right now. Okay, so now we're gonna go the opposite way. In this learning check, you're asked how many grams of helium are present in 8.00 liters of helium at STP. So before we had the mass of methane and we had to find the volume. Now we're given the volume uh, and we're asked for the mass. So um, please do pause the video now while you work that. It probably will take a few minutes. And then when you're set, start it back up and we'll see if you selected the correct answer choice. 
Okay, so as we always do, we'll start by analyzing the problem, by, and here we'll state the given and needed quantities. We're given 8.00 liters of helium, and we're also told that we're at STP. We need to know the number of grams of helium that that 8 liter volume represents. So moving right on to step two, we'll write our plan to calculate that needed quantities. Uh, and in this case, the uh, liters of helium are where we start. We'll use the molar volume because we are at STP. We can use that relationship of 22.4 liters equals one mole of helium. That will allow us to know the number of moles of helium that we're dealing with. And then finally, using the molar mass of helium, we'll be able to find the gram mass of helium, which is what the question ultimately asked for. Moving on to step three, we know that one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters at STP, which is what we happen to be at in this problem. We also know that one mole of helium is equal to 4.00 grams of helium. Helium's an element. We could read it right off the table. Uh, should have been nice and easy for us. Uh, and of course, because of those relationships being able to be represented with either species on top in the numerator and the other in the denominator, we'll have to move on to step four to see how we're going to set this up with the factors correct to cancel units. So starting with our 8.00 liters of helium, we need liters of helium in the denominator, which means we're going to have one mole of, meth of uh, helium over 22.4 liters. Then we're going to multiply through by uh, 4.00 grams of helium over one mole of helium to get a final value of 1.43 grams of helium. And that was answer choice C, which is hopefully the answer choice you selected. If not, um, and uh, hopefully uh, in solving this together, now you, you see where you may have gone wrong. If it's still not clear, please do reach out to me. I, we don't want you to uh, dig yourself into deep a hole here if we can uh, find out what's going on and why you might be making some mistakes here. All right, so this is indeed a chemistry class, of course, and we are interested in uh, chemical reactions. So a chapter on gases makes sense to discuss gases in chemical reactions. Uh, and because of that molar volume of a gas idea that we've touched on already this lecture, uh, we can start to think about the volume or the amount of a gas at STP in a chemical reaction can be calculated from either the STP conditions or uh, from mole-mole factors from the balanced equation. So if we're uh, using up gases or generating gases, or if everything's in the gas phase, uh, we can follow chemical reactions by looking at volumes uh, instead of uh, looking at moles as we've done in previous chapters. So using our uh, guide, right, now we're going to alter our guide a little bit to make it specific to uh, reactions involving gases. First, we're going to state given and needed quantities like we always have as we analyze our problems. Second, we'll write our plan just like we usually do. Um, third, we'll write those equalities and conversion factors. And again, using molar volume now, not just to solve for a change in a molar volume or a change in volume rather with a change in number of moles or vice versa but uh, indeed uh, using molar volume to uh, figure out how many moles of a given reactant or product is present and then finally uh, step four set up the problem and solve the thing so uh, let's work one together and uh, then we'll end with a learning check all right, so for an example, what volume in liters of oxygen, O2, one of our diatomics, gas, is needed to completely react with 15.0 grams of aluminum at STP? So uh, we have our balanced chemical equation. It's all balanced for you. Just be careful. I could give you an unbalanced equation. I usually would highlight that by saying unbalanced, but uh, this one's all balanced for you. So that's one less thing for you to do. So we can go ahead and state the given and needed quantities and analyze our problem here. We're given the 15.0 grams of aluminum. We're given the balanced chemical equation, uh, and we need to know how many liters of O2 at STP would be required to complete that reaction. Moving on to step two, we'll write our plan to calculate the needed quantity. So we're starting with grams of aluminum. We can use the molar mass. It's an element, so that should be really simple to uh, convert grams of aluminum into moles of aluminum. Uh, and then now we can use the balanced chemical equation that shows us three moles of oxygen gas uh, react with every four moles of aluminum to produce that aluminum oxide. Uh, finally, now that we're in moles of aluminum, we can use the molar, I'm sorry, moles of oxygen rather, we can use the molar volume of oxygen, uh, 22.4 liters per mole at STP to figure out the liters of oxygen we need. 
Okay, looking at our relationships, so one mole of aluminum equals 27.0 grams right off the periodic table. Uh, we know that we have four moles of aluminum reacting with every three moles of O2 to produce those two moles of aluminum oxide. Uh, and uh, so we can use those relationships as well as the relationship that one mole of O2, or any gas for that matter, at SDP equals 22.4 liters uh, to uh, solve this thing in our next step. All right, so here we are in step four, set up the problem and calculate. So we've got the 15.0 grams of aluminum. Uh, we'll use that uh, molar mass uh, with the form one mole of AL over 27.0 grams to cancel out grams of aluminum. Now we're in moles of aluminum. We can use the uh, stoichiometric ratio from the balanced chemical equation to find the moles of oxygen, three moles of O2 for every four moles of AL. Now that we're in moles of O2, we can uh, calculate the liters by multiplying through by the molar volume, 22.4 liters of O2 per one mole of O2 at STP, which is our condition here. And we find that we need 9.33 liters of O2 gas to completely react with that four, uh, I'm sorry, 15.0 grams of aluminum, four moles in the balanced chemical equation, but 15.0 grams to start. So uh, that's uh, how we do it. And now that we've done it together, of course, you know what's coming up. Uh, it's time for a learning check. So our learning check here, what mass of Fe will react with 5.50 liters of O2 at STP? Uh, same balanced chemical equation, so that should make things easy for you. Uh, a little different though we're going the other way so uh, and be careful it's iron instead of aluminum but it ends up the same mole ratios so there we have our answer choices please uh, go ahead and uh, solve this problem stop the video here while you do your work and start it back up once you've determined the mass of iron necessary Okay, so step one, uh, I'm sure you've gotten used to this. So this was probably no problem for you to set up the uh, problem uh, in our table. We're given the 5.50 liters of O2 at SDP to start now. We need the mass of Fe, and we have that equation, which should look familiar. The one we worked together, it was Al. Here it's Fe uh, because they both form three plus ions as oxides. Uh, we end up with the same overall mole ratios, just substituting in uh, iron in place of aluminum. Our step two in this learning check should be almost exactly the opposite of the step two from uh, the uh, previous uh, example that we worked together. So now we're starting with liters of O2. We're using the molar volume of O2 to convert into moles. We'll use the mole-mole factors from the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of O2 into moles of Fe. And then finally, we'll use the molar mass of Fe, not Al, uh, to find the moles, uh, the grams rather, of Fe that we need to uh, react. Moving on to step three, we know that one mole of iron uh, Fe on the periodic table is 55.9 grams, so uh, roughly double, a uh, little more than double the aluminum molar mass. And so we have uh, four moles of iron uh, equals three moles of O2 based on our mole-mole factors. We know that one mole of O2 is 22.4 liters at STP. And using those three relationships, we can move on to step four now and set up and solve this problem. All right, and here we are setting it up. We start with that 5.50 liters of O2. To convert into moles of O2, we need the form of the conversion factor where one mole of O2 is divided by 22.4 liters of O2. We've canceled now the unit liters O2. We're in moles of O2. We multiply through by four moles of Fe over three moles of O2 to convert into moles of iron. And then finally, using the molar mass of iron, we take our four moles of iron times 55.9 grams of iron per one mole and we end up with a final value of 18.3 grams of iron, which was answer choice B. So hopefully that's the one you selected because you did all the work right, not because you guessed luckily. But uh, if that's not the case, either you guessed right for the wrong reasons or you uh, found an incorrect result, uh, please do reach out to me uh, and we'll uh, get you back on track as best we can. Otherwise, if things are going well, we'll see you for section eight here in chapter seven and we'll almost be uh, done with gases.